the recording has started. All right. I will talk to you later. Talk to you later. Greetings. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Did you want to speak about Atlantis? Yes, um, yes. Um, my, yeah. My um, main question is about um, the genetics of humans. Uh, I just realized that Atlanteans weren't Homo sapiens. They were some other species, right? They were. They were not humans, correct. And uh, are, you, are you one of them? I am one from the continent of Atlantis. It was really not a very big continent. Mm -hmm. More of a large island, really. But they called it a continent because it had all the makings of a a different kind of lifestyle than had ever been seen before on the planet. Uh-huh. And can you introduce yourself if it is appropriate? Finyet. Okay, Finyet. And um, are you a no, spirit? I'm just an, uh, one of the elders. Are you one of the spirits? Are you living now? I am not in physicality at this time. Uh-huh. Thank you for coming. Um, so were the Atlanteans uh, the giants? No, we were not giants. We were, very, we were large, mm -hmm. but we were not considered what you would call a giant. Uh -huh. I, I don't think seven foot tall is a giant. I see. Did you have elongated heads? We did have, some of us did. There was more than one species on Atlantis. There uh -huh. were many welcome from different areas of the galaxy, if you will. Uh -huh. and there were those welcome from Egypt and from some of the European areas. If they could get here, uh -huh. we would are actually go to them more than they would come to us. And uh, the ones from Egypt also weren't humans, were they? There were some humans on in Egypt, but there were some non-humans, the Blue Pleiadians and some of some reptilian species. Mm -hmm. Also, there was several other different species there, um, at, but not all at once. Which ones were Nephilim? Were what? Nephilim. Which ones were Nephilim? Nephilim, that was Blue Pleiadians, or their essence of Blue Pleiadians. They did not all look like, uh, they did not take on the look of humans completely, but they did not also, some of them did take on the look of humans. Let me uh, correct that. Some did take on the look of humans when they wanted to go in and talk to the humans and uh, give propaganda 
in some ways. They became more human looking, but you will notice that some of them did not look human as well. Um, which of the new blue Pleiadians, uh, were they the one of Lakesh species or from Lakesh or some others? Blue, Plea uh, blue uh, avians, not blue Pleiadians. Oh gosh, blue avians, I see. I see. So when you said there were um, blue people in Egypt, did you mean blue avians or blue Pleiadians? Blue avians. Oh, okay. The blue Pleiadians came later, okay. but they did come to the planet earlier and later. But during that period of time, they did not visit much. I see. So Nephilim are blue avians. Yes. Oh, I see. That's easy. Uh, so what's the name of the species with elongated heads, which are uh, like protrude backward, like big head, tall and oh, the ones with the elongated skulls. Yeah. The poor addition. Say again. The poor addition. Poor addition. They are no longer around. Uh, we, we hear that they exist in Vatican. They live uh, in Vatican and they just uh, wear long hats to... They are very far away at this point. Oh, the poor addition uh, were very harsh with humans, actually. Uh-huh. Okay. They were not a kind species, at least not when they came when we were around. Okay. So I, uh, I found... They were really not that welcome on Atlantis because they caused a lot of trouble. Right. I got it. Um, were Elohim a physical species? Elohim was never a physical species. I see. They were always a god species, an angelic kind of species. Somewhere from off planet, their very their density was much less mm -hmm. than that of a human or anyone that would be considered corporeal. How about Yahweh? Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh? Yeah. He was a god. I see. I see. So he was present in Atlantean times. In some ways, yes. Spiritually, yes. Mm -hmm. He was called many things. Yahweh was only one of his names. I see. Um, so one fact which um, I need to put in perspective of Atlantean history is that human geneticists, modern geneticists found that all humans have one single mother and one single father. Uh, the mother was... Um, much earlier, like thousands of years earlier, so it's not a couple. So there was a kind of a bottleneck, and then only one person gave a rise. So all humans, all modern humans, arise from one single person. Not from, not only from one, but we had one major mother and one major father, which was about roughly 150,000 years ago. So it puts it in Atlantean times. It would be the seeding of the human population. You realize that there was different eras where they brought forth evolution quickly. On uh, some of the early seedings, like Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal, etc. Mm -hmm. So there was a fast evolution with experimentation, but that wasn't from the Atlanteans. That was other species that did that. But during the period of time of Atlantis, there was some great experimentation with humanity going on. So did Atlanteans co contribute to modern humanity? So are we relatives? In some ways, yes. We did contribute DNA to help with more successful evolutionary traits. 
how much of our DNA is yours, percent-wise? Well, that is hard to say. I believe at the time it was only about 15 to 20 percent, but now I believe it might be even higher. The elders were not privy to all the things that were going on in the secrets uh, societies of Atlantis. Uh huh. Uh, thank you. Uh... Well, you see, the scientific a community was advanced and the elders were more of a, on the spiritual level and were not interested in scientific advancements because we felt that spirituality was more important however there was much going on in the scientific world in the atlantean era I got it so which of the human races uh, would be more, would be looking more like Atlanteans? Well, I know Arcturians look more like the Asian or Oriental people. They got their look from the Arcturians a little. Those that would be considered looking more like Atlanteans would probably be those of Hmm. Maybe Scandinavian. I see. Wow. Thank you. So how did um, Atlantean species died out? I, I, was, I was, for me, it is unexpected. To, to, so did it actually die out or just made it into humans? What was, after the destruction, how did it happen? How did what happen? Uh, why did Atlantean species disappear from Earth? Oh, there was, well, the Earth at that time was very disruptive and volcanic, and there was a lot of earthquakes still going on there. Even though we found it to be a very beautiful and habitable place in many ways, there was still too much going on. We left after a great uh uh, earthquake and tsunami, they decided to leave the planet. And so the Lumerians moved to a different place. The Atlanteans left the planet altogether, gathered up their technology and moved on. So there was not, not, not many, so not many Atlanteans left and humanity started grow to grow instead? So how yes. was it? Well, the continent of Atlantis, as it's called, was pretty much destroyed by earthquakes and tsunamis at one point. And so there was not much left of it on the surface. And uh, there was a great uh, earthquake and that caused the part of the continent to sink. And they realized that seismically it was going to sink eventually anyway so they left so were the atlantis um civilization in the same uh density as as we are was it the same third dimension yes we were a higher third dimension we did live in the third dimension we did come from a third dimensional uh place outside of your world now, many believe that we were higher dimensional. And the reason that they believe that is because the technology was so strong and the technology was, uh, the, the legends of our technology were uh, that it was far beyond anything that Earth had ever seen, which is true. However, we could really not survive correctly if we were of a different dimension. Uh-huh. Where from did Atlanteans come? We came from a couple different places. You mean what part of the universe? Yeah. I'm not sure that I am allowed to tell you that, but I can tell you this. We are still a species a few galaxies away from here. We still 
have survived and still exist. Wow. Are you part of modern uh, his, your history? Are you involved in our development in any way? There have been some Atlanteans that have been involved mm -hmm. re reincarnating into humans, yes. But physically? Physically, they have only in the, the uh, 10th and 11th centuries, the last time Atlanteans have been on Earth physically. Is there any way to recognize an Atlantean? They disguised themselves, we did at that time, as you, to look like humans. But we were much taller. Uh-huh. So if I see a tall person, that doesn't mean that they're an Atlantean, right? That does not mean that they're Atlantean. However, there are Pleiadians, there are Nords, there are others on your planet that are here that are tall as well. You will know the Nords by their blonde hair, blue eyes, and strong physiques, but they are also very tall. They are very charming, but don't anger them. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, and where, where from are they? They're from the Pleiades. I got it. Not Orion, right? How do you tell them apart? No, those, the ones that are from Orion, I have a different temperament completely. Oh, we, we, what, what, what temperament? They're very stoic. You see, the Nords are very friendly and charming. The, the ones from Orion are very straight-laced and stoic, uh, very disciplined and uh, anger easily. So you will know them. I see. I see. I see. So, but you see, they, they anger easily only because they expect that everyone knows as much as they do, and they do not tolerate any kind of stupidity or... Oh, thank you. Got it. Got it. Um, uh, next question I had. Um, the Atlanteans... What uh, <clears throat> the story goes that Atlanteans um, continued some of the colonies after the destruction of the continent. They continued some colonies in Egypt and in Americas and maybe in other parts of the world. Well, there was a section, yes, they moved a couple different places, especially the Lemurians. They moved to places in your North America. They moved to places in New Zealand and areas near that, near there. They moved to areas in Crete, uh, off the, in the uh, Greek islands. Different areas like, you see, because Crete was actually connected to uh, the continent of Atlantis that moved out th through the middle of the Mediterranean out across the front of Portugal. So it was a very long, long, windy, curved island, but parts of uh, the continent of Atlantis still exist as uh, the Greek islands. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh, how, how different were Lemurians from Atlanteans? How can you tell them apart by looking at them? Well, it's more how they acted, but the Lemurians were not as tall as the Atlanteans, but they were much more interested in uh, the crystals, in the, in the energies of technologies, uh, their religion, their spirituality came from the stones and from uh, the different uh, elements that they that uh, they could control or could control them. But they looked a little bit more gaunt. They were thinner, and they were more serious. 
They were very loving, don't get me wrong. They were a very loving species. However, they were very much more interested in materialism connected to spiritual spirituality because their crystals meant a lot to them. They would tell fortunes and were able to see things in the future through the crystals that they would keep, and they were very valuable. Which of the earth cultures would remind the Lemurians? Let's see. The Lemurians, well, and they were darker skinned, so there are some Africans that look like Lemurians. Uh huh. In terms of the culture, what culture would um, remind? Like, ah, traditions. Actually, if you go into Australia, the Aborigines of Australia remind me of uh, the a shorter version of the Lemurians. What's the difference between Lemurians and Lemurians? I don't think there is any difference. Oh. I think it's a pronunciation. Um, you know, we tried to figure out like Moor was a, a continent, right? Or a series of islands, Moor. And Lemur is from Moor, right? Yes. And um, Lumer is, I think, is um, a planet or a star, is it? Yes. Okay. But Lemurians existed long after the Atlantean culture left. Oh, wow. On your planet, Lemurians stayed a lot longer, for at least a thousand more years. What time was that? How long ago was that? 150,000 years ago. In that area. Ah, I thought the Atlantis, the last, the last blow to Atlantis was around 23, 24,000 years ago. Is it right? Yes. Well, the, uh, your time and our time are different. I see. But let me think how they would calculate it. Probably it would be 23,000 years ago on your planet. But as we calculate time, it would be different. All right. But the Lemurians settled in many different places, but eventually left the planet. Uh, and it was because their home planet was in danger. So they left to go take care of that. What's their home star? Their home star was Celebus. And which area is it? Celebus is in a, a galaxy that is not commonly named by your scientists, but given a number. I see. Uh, so the Greeks, are the Greeks, um, uh, I mean, the Greek history and gods is uh, very, very interesting. So, yes. Uh, is it you coming? Zeus and all those. Yeah, is it coming from Atlanteans or from Lemurians or from where from? The Greek mythologies came from a different species altogether, not Lemurians or Atlanteans. Mm -hmm. The ability to throw lightning, as Zeus was able to do, was not something that was common to Lemurians or Atlanteans. Mm -hmm. But it was common to... Species, there was a species at war uh, that were traveling through the galaxy. There was two species fighting, and they would find planets to fight on, but they traveled, they were both nomadic. Mm -hmm. The reason why they were fighting is because one had stolen a planet from the other, and they continued to war. And as they moved from planet to planet, they would take much of the mineral content or take things of value to them and but the war would continue let me explain 
there they had many battles in the Russian Siberian area and they had many bar battles in the Scandinavian areas and also in the Greek Greek and uh, higher areas over there also and they they had there's still remnants of their battles uh, scarred there was scarred earth and elements that are found in Siberia today are from other parts of the universe I'm not sure if you're aware of that no okay so is there a name for those species we did not introduce ourselves they were warring amongst themselves they were passing through they were only on the earth for a matter of probably a year but they caused a lot of damage during that period of time and developed quite a reputation with the people of earth they appeared as great as gods to the earthlings they and they were humans were transfixed by their appearance because they were human looking in some ways except their bodies were much larger and they were also different colors they were orangish in nature and some of them were gold in color they could change it was because they uh, were illuminating energy fields they had energy fields around their bodies and so you could see through the energy field to the being and they would, we, would make them look like they were glowing and that they were different colors like orange and yellow and gold. You see, but, but uh, Greek uh, mythology is much deeper than it can be picked up in one year. It is the whole history very... Yes, deep. well, humans decided to make a whole culture around it. But it feels very different. It feels like somebody given it to humans. Who was that? Yes, they gave their some of their history to humans. That is true. And some they interacted with the humans as as it was. And yes, they were there for a year or and gave them a great deal of history of their past and of uh, of how they have existed and uh but they fought a lot of battles in the meantime. Thank you. Um, but they, the people were transfixed by their appearance and by their stories and uh, celebrated them constantly. They loved that, by the way. They were, very, they were very happy that humans thought they were beautiful, that they thought they were elegant, they, they were quite beautiful. They were a beautiful species. Thank you. Um, so the transition from Lemurians and Atlanteans to Homo sapiens, how did it happen? So there were colonies after, after when, when, when you left, um, how many humans were there on Earth? There were thousands. Uh-huh. Uh, did humans interact with uh, Atlanteans and Lemurians? What was the status of human culture? The human culture was rather barbaric then. It was rather simplistic. But we were able to help them along with certain things. We taught them about herbs and mm -hmm. plants and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And they would come to us for... Uh, they liked to they did not know how to make clothing out of cloth but only out of furs and things of that nature so we taught them how to do uh make clothing and things of that nature uh what humans used as slaves what what humans used as slaves and workers they were at some point yes because um <clears throat> there is a history of um, of humans being engineered engineered as workers. Yes, <laughs> they were used as slaves at first, but the we the elders decided that it was not what should be happening, and we made them 
release them. So many of them did stay on Atlantis, uh, but they did not live in the cities as much, but they left, li lived outside of the city cultures. I understand. So was there uh, an intentional transfer of culture from Atlanteans and Lemurians to humans when they left, or was it just... Uh, we that felt that it was not right to leave them with a culture they could not understand. Okay. We, we did teach them what we could. Mm -hmm. and when we left, they were, they were on their own. We did not really leave them anything. We felt that it was only right that they should evolve on their own. Was there the idea of uh, uh, the prime directive or something like that? Well, since the prime directive was not, is not to interfere with a culture, they were being developed at the time that we were there. So the prime directive really did not uh, matter at that time. We were there when they were uh, being uh, worked on and developed and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So they knew about us. We were, uh, they were interfering with your culture anyway, even before it was a intellectual culture, so to speak. It was primitive, but it was still intelligent. And so we did not seem to feel that the prime directive was broken since they were developing being developed during our time that we were there. I see. Um, the last question I had was, um, there was a story that Atlanteans were given a choice either to become small, uh, incarnate in smaller bodies or to leave the planet and they chose to leave the planet. Is it about right? Well, that is not why we left. The reason why we left was because of all the seismic activities on, we didn't, you see, the continent that we were on, Atlantis, <clears throat> was perfect for us in many ways. We had developed it and brought it into our own sort of a utopian understanding in some ways. And when things started to fall apart, physically as a city, as an island, as a continent, then it was time to move on. There was no other place on the planet that we wanted to go to at that time. And there, was, there were other places that were being checked out and we wanted to go somewhere that didn't have as much danger as your planet had. I see. All right, thank you very much. I think we will have many more questions, but for now I'm uh, running out of time, so I would wrap up. Uh, and I would invite, um, uh, maybe Linus can, can come. Thank you very much for the, for the conversation. Yes. It was good to speak to you.